Hello and welcome to the latest installment on TV Aftermath. For today's episode, as promised before, I will be going over the second half of the second season of The Walking Dead. And by this, I mean episodes 8 through 13, the final six episodes within the second season. As, as before, it is excellent. Overall, the show is great. It continues, once again, it continues many of the themes that we have seen before. Many of the actions we have seen before come back into play. Many of the character arcs that were going on before continue and, in some cases, reach their, reach their climax at this point in time. And the setup for the third season, which again, I have not seen, is made. But, just let us begin already. Let us go over what once again can be called the plot. Because, even though I haven't seen the third season yet, I have seen, I have skimmed over the comics. Like, I, I skimmed over them. I haven't read them. I've skimmed. So I have an idea of where it's going, but I don't have a very clear knowledge, for knowledge. You know? So... What I'm going so from what I know I can get I can guess where some of the stuff is going, where some of the foreshadowing is coming from, you know? I can guess at that, but I don't know for sure. That'll wait until I see season three. But once again, the plot itself is relatively is relatively simple. After the after the after the death of Sophia and the death of all the walkers within the barn, Urshel Herschel runs off to go off someplace to drink his problems away. And there and Rick and Rick and Glenn go after him, and once they're there, they encounter other survivors. Other survivors who come all the way from someplace up north. But they can encounter other survivors, get into a fight with them, and they learn from a prisoner they take, Randy that these that these guys that they encountered are dangerous that they have that they have a bad habit of being very violent that when they encountered helpless women before they well quite frankly raped them he never says the word but that's the implication we're given and there's also and the fact that they have the prisoner of randy brings up a new question amongst our characters like and this becomes and this becomes the defining one of the defining conflicts here, because once again, the con because now we see the conflict of Rick and Shane finally reach its epitome, its climax, and here is where it really all plays out. It plays out over, and a lot of it plays out over this question of what should we do with him, and Shane basically says, "Kill him. He's a threat." He knows where the farm is, like, he knows the people who live here, he knows where the farm is. And from the information they've gotten from him, they know that the other group is dangerous. And just from the comics, what I know of the comics, I'm guessing this other group is the governor's men, I think. Because I'm guessing it is. Again, I don't know, but I'm guessing. And if, if that's the case, then obviously, yes, they're dangerous. But Rick, of course, doesn't want to doesn't want to kill the guy. He just wants to leave him, leave him, abandon him in some place. And when they're trying to abandon him, that's when they discover that he already knows where the farm is, regardless. And here we see we finally see the punch out between Rick and Shang. Like they get into a full on brawl as they try to leave him in this one place. But like as to, and Shane tries to kill him because he sees that. Since he now knows where their farm, since he knows where the farm is, regardless, he's a threat. He can lead their guys there. And so this is where the fight between Shane and Rick that we have been seeing built up all through it finally comes out. And you can totally see, you can totally see it. Like I said, it had been being built up since season one. I give it credit on rewatching on how well it was built up since the very beginning because. Now I can really see it playing out. Now I really see, like, yes, this was being built up since the very beginning, and this is a good payoff. And it, and 
in the first place they drop off at a town, another thing to know, another thing to know, there they encounter a couple of police officers who became zombies, but they weren't bitten or even scratched. They they marked this off as trivial, but this will come back later, and it does tie up again to something from season one that I don't think I meant that I'll go over if I didn't mention it. If I didn't mention it in my season one recap, I'm sorry, but I'll go over it. And so, this, from there, from there, Rick th things, makes the conclusion that we should kill him, but Dale, who, as I said before, was the one who, for, who first began to really suspect uh, Shane, who began to suspect that Shane was responsible for the murder, uh, for the killing of Otis, in order to get away from the high school. And Dale, who also, who did that, and who also kept the gun away from Andrea, who was c contemplating suicide and who kept her alive, basically. We, Dale, we'd always, always seen, was kind of the guy who was trying to do, again, like Rick, the right thing, but more so was trying to maintain a pre a pre-zombie apocalypse mentality, who kept trying to be the good guy, and so naturally clashed a lot with Dale, with Shane. We see Dale go around basically saying that no matter how you look at it, this is murder, and murder is not right, like regardless of how you try to spin it, that it's wrong, and we shouldn't be doing this. And from, and from there, and from there we see Dale play this whole thing out, we see the entire interactions between the characters, we see him becoming hardened, we see Urshel become more hardened towards events. As like as like as he says like because he's lost everything now, like he's he says like I was a fool I was fooling myself how what was I even bothering with? And we also see we also see um and eventually and we also see uh the Carl Carl begins to get more more character development to him as well, and quite frankly Carl's a little dumbass. Now, like, he always takes someone's gun without permission. Like, I'm not saying he shouldn't be trained to use the gun in the zombie apocalypse. I'm saying the little shit doesn't know how to use the gun properly. He doesn't have the proper respect for it. He just goes up, steals someone's gun from, like, their bag, puts it in his pants, and, like, walks off with it. Like, no, that's stupid. That's stupid as all hell. He went off, he messed with some walker, got it going, got it going, and it attacked, and it got Dale, killed him. And we see that play out of of like the intera of like an interaction between Carl and Rick, like one of the first father son interactions we really get between the two. Because before that, it seemed like Carl usually turned more to Shane for like this kind of thing. So we begin to see like maybe a uh, maybe like a bit of a closeness a closerness to them. Maybe I don't know. That's 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 like this is like my take on what's going on. But anyway, like since the prisoner is back at their barn, now they gotta figure out what to get what to do with him. And after and Rick, who had been seriously considering killing him, in fact, it said they were gonna kill him. And Dale was arguing against it. After the death of Dale, he decides that nah, we should let him live. We should drop him off. We should go back to the plan before. Shane doesn't like this, and so he initiates his own plan. He tricks people into thinking that Randall escaped when, in actuality, he killed Randall off in the woods, and he sends them off on, on like, a search for them. And from that and from that search, we see... And in that search, he tries to kill Rick, but Rick, but Rick is basically forced to kill him in return. And that's something Rick constantly says afterwards, is that, is that even after he admits to it, he says, he forced me to do it. My hands are clean. He forced me. We see, a, we see that, like, Rick basically just really trying to justify something to do that trying, like, having to kill his best friend. And we also, and right after Shane is killed, he's killed by a knife, by Rick's knife, he comes back as a, as a zombie, and then has to be put down by Carl with a gunshot, a gunshot, and a gunshot, and a gunshot, uh, and a gunshot that had gone off, like, earlier when Shane had tried to kill Rick, it attracts zombies, and the zombie horde attacks the farm, and from the farm, attacks the farm, 
they have to burn down the barn like and burn down all the stuff and evacuate. And there, and when they've evacuated, they meet up. They all meet up again, except for Andrea. Andrea, who got lost in the woods. But in the woods, she meets up with <laughs> with Mikon. I think that's how her name is pronounced. Again, I haven't seen the third season, but I know she's a character from the comics. She's badass. She's like she's a black woman. She has a katana, uh, an assassin's hood, <laughs> and she for some reason she drags around two zombies who have had their arms and mouths cut off and are chained to her. I don't know why she does that. Like they're her pets, I guess. That's what I picked up from the com from my skimming of the comics and from general osmosis. But yeah. So I'm pretty sure she's gonna I know she's gonna be a character in the third season because I have the DVD and the DVD says so in the back. And the DVD on the back and the DVD back also says the governor's gonna be the next character. That's why I'm guessing that the other group they mentioned was the governor. And when they're out there, one of the they we get a preview of the third season, and this one I did see coming because I've read the comics, is the prison. I know that the pr they spend a long time in that prison in the comics. And I can guess already that the third season is gonna be is gonna take place in that prison. And based on the promotional posters I've seen for the fourth season, either part or or all of the fourth season will take place there. I'm not sure. I don't know, but I'm but I know it's gonna be but I know the third season's gonna be in there and at least part of the fourth season. And the second season ends like that. Oh yeah, with the zombie yeah, the zombie attack, a lot of people were killed. Let's see here. Dale die. I already mentioned Dale died. He died earlier. He had to be shot. Uh, Andrea got separated from them all. A couple of, two of Urshel's kids die. A couple of Urshel's kids died, and Urshel's people died in that one. So yeah, that, so yeah, I once again had to rack up the body count. It's, that entire last episode functions almost as one giant climax to, the, to it all. But yeah, as I said, we see a lot of the character stuff reach its, reach its climax here. Shane and Rick's conflict reaches its very definite climax in this in these few episodes, like where they first trade blows in the in in like 15, 18 miles out, and when later on when Rick is forced to kill Shane, we see all that entire build up, like uh, like more character development, more character stuff for Glenn and Daryl. Mm. More stuff, more stuff for uh, more like I said, more building of the family between Lori and Rick and Carl, and of course like Lori's pregnancy, like that's gonna become a thing. And uh, oh yeah, something I should mention. Like I said, after I t I did say that Shane became a zombie after he got killed by a knife by Rick, even though he didn't get bitten. That answers something that have, that answers a question that had been raised in the first season at the very end, when they were escaping the blowing up CDC crappy CG effect. Jenner had before that Jenner had whispered something into Rick's ears. The crazy doctor had whispered something to him, and we find out what it is. We find out that it was that it was his saying that we're all infected with whatever this disease is. We're all infected with it. So it doesn't matter if we get bitten or not. When we die, we'll come back as zombies. And that's and we see that play out with both with both Randy and with Rick, no, and with Shane, and with a couple of police officers we had saw that foreshadowed that. But we definitely see it there because both of them were most definitely not bitten by walkers. They were killed somewhere else. They were killed somehow someplace else. Very definitely with Shane because we saw his death on screen. That's like the giveaway that, my god, this thing isn't just being transmitted via bites anymore. And our thing, a helicopter. In season one, Rick had seen a helicopter flying over the city of Atlanta. Others had told him he was probably hallucinating and that it wasn't true. I, that it probably wasn't true. Here in the last episode we see that helicopter again. It flies over the city of Atlanta and it causes a giant herd of zombies to follow it. 
and that herd eventually passes through the farm, drawn there by the gunshots. So I don't know what that helicopter is there for, but that's another mystery to be answered in a, to be answered later on. Maybe in the third season, who knows? I don't know. Like I said, I haven't seen the third season, so I'm not sure. But we'll find we'll find out when we get there. Hopefully, hopefully it'll pro it might answer that it might answer some other things, and it might and it'll probably just raise more questions because that's how it goes. So yeah, like plot-wise, more happened here than more happened here than in the second season. But again, most of it was than in the first half. But most of it is driven by the characters themselves, as before. As before, the character interactions are the meat of this, and it's really good meat too. <laughs> it's tasty. It's delicious. I crave more of it. I I want to like I just like I'm getting this video out. I'm recording this video right now in between classes to try and get it out as soon as possible so I can move on to the third season as quickly as I can because I want to get it out. I want to finish it before, before the fourth season begins so I can move on in proper fashion. So, anything else worth see here, Anything else worth really noting about it? Uh, I, I, just some gen just some general things to summarize what I know about the series so far. Like just some general overall things that I don't think I specifically praised earlier, but that do definitely deserve consideration. The zombie makeup and zombie effects are generally very good. The zombie makeup is generally pretty darn good. The zombie effects are usually pretty good. Like the crap like crappy CG blood that was only used like maybe once or twice. Like for a couple of seconds in the first in the pilot episode, but like since then it's been very well done. Like it's been very well done. Like for like look, it looks practical. I hope it is. But like yeah, the zombie makeup is really freaking good. I should say that. The music for the series is generally very is generally very good. Also, like it does an excellent job. Uh, it does an excellent job of like adding tension and whatnot. It's great. I love it. Of course, credit goes to the actors and actresses involved. Credit goes to the writers who managed to write really good characters and character interactions, and the actors who managed to do a great job playing it out, and the directors who do a good job capturing it all on film. It's just a wonderful effort by everyone involved. And I believe that all that stuff, which I generally, which I didn't really praise in and of itself in my earlier videos, I think that deserves due consideration because of the effort that went into it. But here in the second in the second half of the second season, we do also see the beginnings of of what inevitably happens in any zombie apocalypse. The threat can't always be the zombies. The threat has to eventually comes back to other humans, as in like fighting groups. Like I know the governor becomes like the big bad, the big bad guy they're fighting in the comics, and I know he appears in the next season. And like we already got like the fighting between them and between like Rick's group and whatever guys they encountered on the road. Are they the governor's people? I don't know because I haven't seen season three yet, so I can't say for sure. But we did see that we saw the threat of their of the action being used against them, uh, and of course like the actual like we actually see the first trading of blows between Rick and Shane and Shane's eventual death. So we did eventually see like all that becoming a factor, human conflict. <laughs> I like I don't I don't know if I want to say, but at the end of the day, another a big theme of this. Oh yeah, one thing, one last thing to mention. A big theme of this second half of the second season is the theme of home. That is a big theme, a theme that overarches this entire thing. That when they were at Urschel's farm, they were looking for a home, some place to call a home, some place they, that they were safe. Like that's why they killed all the walkers in the barn because there was a threat. They didn't want to feel threatened at their new home. And when when Urschel, that's why like Urschel was resistant against leaving the farm, and like why they were all resistant against like wanting to leave when Urschel was telling them to get off, and Urschel didn't want to leave. The zombies were overrunning it. It was home. 
and they end the they end the second season with Rick saying that I know we'll find a place out there that we can call our home. As it goes up and pans up to the prison in the background, which I know is a major thing later on. That's so the idea of home and trying to make a home in this apocalypse. That is a that is a major theme that we see played out here. And okay, I would say that's just about that's just about everything I can go over. I re I recapped the second season. I've now finished recapping the second season. Time to get on to the third season. Hopefully, I'll get that done relatively quickly, so I can then move on to season four when it comes out and. We can follow that wonderful journey together. So, until then, this has been TV Aftermath. I am I am Misfit Luke of the Media Misfits. If you like this video, like, comment, and subscribe. If you didn't, still comment, still comment and subscribe. I re require all require all kinds of input. <laughs> got it? If you got it, send it. I'll take any kind of it. So yeah. Just in, just in general, and thanks for watching.